pop quiz. How many of you, when you hear a new song, you like, will listen to it over and over again? Okay, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. How many will do it for like days, weeks, weeks, right? Or maybe people. I've been listening to that song for like three weeks straight, like over and over again. My wife is like going to Amazon and looking up literature to figure out whether I have a problem. <laughs> anyway, um, it's great to be here again. Um, this is the impossible job talk which doesn't, isn't what it says in the pamphlet. I'm also a serial change my name of the talk at the last moment person as well. So, um, surprise! <laughs> as we already said, um, my name's Rance, Michael Luff, whatever my name is. Let's get to know you a little bit. How many were here last year for Calibrate? Nice, okay, so some, I'm gonna repeat myself a little bit. Only seven of you are gonna know that I'm doing that. How many of you are been leading for like, uh, from now for like six months. Brand new leaders. 20%. Okay, so year to five years. Oh, sweet spot. Great. Five years till forever. Okay, how many of you are like, what's this leadership thing? I'm going to go here. I've never been a leader, but I'm just curious. I'll make fun of you. <laughs> okay, all right, so we've got, oh, oh last question. And then I swear I'll start talking more. Um, how many of you have had any sort of formalized leadership other than going to this conference or buying a book about leadership or reading a blog or going to a site? Like, you've actually had your company or you've chosen to invest in leadership? About half. That's about right. So half. So half the people in here are totally unqualified to be leaders, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't raise my hand either. Okay, interesting. All right, so that's good. Now I know. All right, so um, I'm Rans. Um, that's my wife's maiden name. I stole it from her years ago, and it's funny because now it's my like famous name. As I said, I wrote a couple. As Sophie said, I wrote a couple books. Uh, Managing humans, the next edition just came out recently. I love the cover, um, the typography, meh. and then being geek is uh, the book I did for like a uh, career guide for nerds and geeks and that sort of thing. Um, we were talked about, we wanted to talk a little bit about path to leadership. So this is normally what I put up when I'm doing this talk. I was at Palantir, I thought it was fascinating that Sonia said, the good work that Michael has done at companies like Apple and Netscape and Pinterest and, <laughs> and Slack, I should say Palantir. Um, I did good work there too, even though it's an interesting place. Um, but it's actually, the story is actually much longer than that. I've actually been doing a lot of different companies. Um, I worked at Borland. How many Borland folks here? Borland? It's aging out. Yeah, I get it. Um, <laughs> Netscape. Okay, kind of trending up a little bit. I was in Prague last week and I asked Netscape and got like, half the audience. It's strange. That startup that you've never heard of? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? Okay, yeah, I was there. Um, I was at Apple, Netscape, uh, that place, uh, Pinterest and Slack. Um, the leadership thing actually started at Netscape. And it was really interesting because I got there, I landed there in like 96, a long time ago, and my manager at the time, this is really how I became a manager, said, hey Michael, hey Lop, whatever your name is, can you, there's these three people over here, can you like look out for them? And I'm like, yeah, cool, that's great, I can do that. And I'm like, great, awesome. So I started looking out for them, I don't know what that meant. I'm like, okay, yeah, well, uh, we're running a bunch, I'll try to scrub, scrub, scrub their bugs, try to meet with them or something like that. He's like, yeah, you should do that. Cool, okay. So, like two or three months later, I'm like, hey, we're kind of busy and we're swamped. Um, we could use some more people. My manager goes, well, you should, you know, open a job. Just write a job description and open it right. And I'm like, I can do that? Honey? I'm like, yeah, you're a manager. I'm like, Holy shit, this is amazing. That's how I became a manager. I had no idea. Like, someone like thought it and then like, poorly told me that I was in the gig. And then suddenly I was a manager. And like, oh, that's cool. Um, so, yeah, that was a, a, a leadership moment there. Um, what I'm going to do today is not be very uh, strategic or very visionary. I'm just going to talk about hacks. I'm just going to talk about simple little things that I think you can do as a new leader or a leader forever that I think are really interesting. And we have to define what a hack actually is. We need to talk about what a hack is. If you're at MIT, a hack is this. A hacker is someone who does interesting and creative work at high intensity levels. 
I always think Red Bull. This applies to anything from writing computer programs, this is the last time I'll read my slides, maybe, um, to pulling a clutter crane that amuses and delights everyone on campus. Like building a half-scale model of the Lunar Lander on top of the Great Dome at MIT. After they did, and we woke up one morning, and there was a Lunar Lander at the Great Dome at MIT. That is a hack. This is not what we're talking about. What we're going to be talking about are small bits of wisdom, about 15 of them, there may be a little other sprinkle based on how it goes, that pay unexpectedly high return without time invested. I had another clause on this, but I took it out because it kind of feels negative if I'm going to say it, which is, and it kind of feels like cheating. <laughs> I do this thing, and like this magical thing happens, and I like did nothing. I got all of this value out of it. Two things about the 15 hacks you're about to hear. Number one, my hacks are different than your hacks. I'm at Slack, we are 286. How many engineers? There are 247 engineers right now. We're growing like crazy. I'm the VP of engineering there. And my hacks, what I need, are maybe different than yours. They may be different than yours. You are a team of seven. You're doing ad tech. You are at a totally different company. You have a different culture. So these may not apply to you. They may seem kind of odd. Hopefully some of them you go, aha, and you write it down. <clears throat> Number two, as I was reviewing these 15 hacks, I realized <laughs> it's kind of their, they are making up for deficiencies that I have, things that I am bad at. Some of these are going to, you're going to read these, you're going to be like, like I automatically do that. I've got a mutant X power at doing that. Why would I ever do that? So there's a little bit of therapy here. There's a third disclaimer. How many of you work at Slack? Show your hands. I know you're here. Okay, great. There's only a couple of them. That's great, because there's some magic going on here that you're going to learn, and you've been like, how does Lop do that? And now you're going to know. Okay, here we go. Um, there, so this is a little bit of therapy. This is things that I think I need to augment myself with. These are things that are strengths and weaknesses, so here we go. Are you ready? Here's the bad news. This job that you're in is impossible. It's impossible. It's incredibly hard. Here are four things which make it impossible. There is never enough time. You are greatly outnumbered by chaotic, beautiful snowflakes who want things and growth and titles and all of this. And they're all totally different. They're completely different. Anything I tell you to say, hey, this is the solution for Susan about this, totally doesn't apply to Dan because they're different folks. Whenever people ask me questions in this Q&A, you're going to ask me questions, you're going to say, this one specific scenario, what I almost always say when it involves these snowflakes is, it depends. Because they're all different, and they need to hear things in different ways. You're greatly outnumbered. There is too much to do, and there is far too much to know, and their expectations of you are unattainable. Don't tell them that. Is this on the internet? Okay, so, hacks. This is why this job is so hard. Here's some hacks. Again, small. These are not like big, huge things. These are small things. I will try to meta them out, but here we go. Are you ready? Small. Try to set your expectations. You're all awesome. Two minutes early, everything. Two minutes early. Whenever I'm looking at a meeting at 1 o'clock, 12.58, I'm up, I'm out the door, and I'm go. This is a pattern that I have given for myself. That's really simple. Hold you hacks, low expectations. What is my doing here? I am a leader. I'm going to meetings. I am setting the tone. At Apple, it's a joke. There's this joke. You say, Apple standard time. You know what at Apple here? Apple? Yep, Apple standard time. What time do meetings start at Apple? 12.05. I'm just kind of rolling in, you know? Who knows? Here is my thesis about Apple, and this is why I think this is an important thing. At some point, someone important, a leader, he or she, walked in at 1103 for a very important meeting. And everyone looked at that and said, hey, 103 is just fine. And 103 became 103 and a half, 104, 105, and suddenly Apple standard time was invented, and everybody's cool with 105. This is bad. This is bad. Why is this bad? Because there's six people sitting there that got there on time that you're paying to read Twitter. <laughs> this makes no sense, right? This is just a respect. 
this small little tiny hat of leaving two minutes to be there on time. It's just a small hat. And it sets tone. This is something I want to tell you. You as leader are being judged on this very unfair studio. You expect to be there, and you're setting the tone for everyone else. If you can't do this, if there's something, there's some reason that this doesn't make sense, you have a bug in the system. There's something else that you need to look at. I have a lot of things that I get going. I landed at Pinterest two, uh, almost two and a half years ago. I got there, there were all these wonderful snowflakes, and it was awesome. And I'm like, I want to meet all of them. It was 170 engineers, I'm not sure. And I'm like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule one-on-ones with every single engineer. 170 times, you can do the math. Noble idea. Doesn't scale at all. I wanted to see, I wanted to understand what the culture was. And there's a great way to understand the culture. You talk to every single person, and you say, what do you value? What do you care about? How do we get things done? And you put together this map how things work, and who knows who, what the communication structures, the power structures are, and the culture comes out. It's a great way to do it. Total disaster. Total disaster. It took me three months, and the last month I'm like, this is going to now take another year, so we'll start doing round tables. But I got this rep, like, wow, wants to meet everybody. Wants to actually, like, he's available, he's present. You have to curate the, uh, the appearance of availability. You have to know Anyone can go and talk to the VP of engineering, the SVP of marketing, whatever your gig is. And the way that I did this at Slack when I landed, and now you guys know, is I said, hey, great to be here. All hands, here's Law. Here's the thing, here's what he cares about. I said, there's office hours. Every two weeks, here's two hours, slots, y'all sign up, I am available. And they fill up instantly. And it's great. And that same <laughs> perception that I wanted for the leadership role at Slack was defined, which is, we're available. You can talk to us. Come talk to us. Also, another small one. Time. There's never enough time. When you sit down in the office, conference room, wherever it is, you're sitting down, what's your name, sir? Matt. Matt. I have a meeting one on one with Matt. I'm all, hey, Matt, how's it going? I haven't chatted in a while, it's been a month or so. I sit down, I'm going down. What am I doing as I'm getting to like, stare at Matt for a half hour? Where's the clock? It's on the screen over there, that's great. Where is it on the table? I'm going to turn it towards me. Because what I'm doing is I'm managing my time well. And I don't want Matt to actually know this, but without telling everyone that I do this, and Matt's now going to be watching me as I do my little clock move. But what I'm doing is I'm setting, I'm actually working on our first hack here, is like I'm being protective of my time. I'm managing my time. Because it's not just my time, it's Matt's time. And it's everyone else's time for every meeting afterwards. I'm going to clock towards you. Or, Easy version of this. I don't like watches. Wear a watch. Put it right there. Really easy. You don't want Matt to see this. Because Matt now does what exactly one else does. He says, oh, Bob doesn't want to be here because he's got this thing and da da da. It's just a little thing. It's a little hack. Manage your time. You were greatly, greatly outnumbered by these amazing humans. You were greatly, there's so many more of them than you. How in the world are you going to be able to listen to all of them, understand what they need, figure out how to grow them, figure out how to understand all of the signal that's wandering around inside of that system? It's hard. <clears throat> There's going to be, I'm going to die, so I'm going to die on my day. That's going to be really sad. And on my tombstone, it's going to say, Lop, and then it's below it, beloved father, son, father, father, whatever. Below that, it's going to say, don't forget to do your one-on-ones. <laughs> this is my jam. Like this is, I did this at the last talk. I'm going to just keep on doing this because if there is only one thing in this day, in my talk, that you're going to learn, this is the thing that I need you to do. This is the half that is most important. 30 minutes every week, no matter what. 30 minutes every week, no matter what. I tend to do them, if I can, early in the week, and if they are not meetings which are status meetings. They are not, hey Matt, how many bugs did you fix? Hey Matt, how many pull requests did you pull up? Hey Matt, is the wiki page up to date? All of these questions that I just asked Matt are discernible by looking at tools that exist to serve this information. Matt and I are going to talk about something strategic. Matt and I are going to go figure out what is Matt's growth plan? What is Matt's 
as aspirations. Does he want to be a VP of engineering? Does he want to be a CTO? Does he want to be a CEO? And we're going to work on that. Or we're going to work on what is the biggest interesting disaster at Slack today. We're going to decompose it. We're going to have a big conversation of how we might solve that problem. There are a million different ways to have the one-on-one -on -one conversation, but you've got to have it because it's bringing you incredible signal about your team and what they care about. The thing I always say about one-on-ones is the moment you have a one-on-one -on -one with your boss and she canceled it or she moved it and your reaction was what? Your reaction was probably not important. Like, she just forgot to mail you or DM you or whatever you're using to communicate with each other. This is an incredible trust building moment between you and your direct team. Small hacks. This, this, this is harder at scale. <laughs> Everyone's first name. Guess what? They know your name. <laughs> they do. It's Lop. Why does it call him Lop? I don't know. Michael's everyone's name. Lop is an easily indexable name. So they know my name. Do I know all of their names? Again, this gets harder when it's 100 or 200 or 300 folks, but it's something I work on a lot. That means like flashcards or a little Perl script that goes and crawls the directories and shows me pictures. Like yes, yes or no, this sort of thing. It's a hack. It's a hack so that when I'm walking down the hallway, and Matt, who is not on my team, sorry Matt, you were getting all of it today, I apologize. I walk by and I'm like, hey Matt, and Matt goes, ah, I'm in this customer support, and the VP of engineering knows who I am, that's interesting to know. It's a small little trust building exercise, trust building transaction. They know your name, why do you not know their name? Use it. I don't know if this is a hack, but this is something I've been trying for like three months or so, is I trickle the first name, especially when it's a one-on-one -on -one with someone who I don't talk with a lot, I trickle the name during the conversation. And I do it deliberately. In my head, I'm like, blah, 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 Alessandro, blah, 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 blah. And I don't know if that's helping. I don't know if that's working. That's another thing I do as well. Okay. Hacks, number six. How am I doing on time? I'm great. Um, Every meeting that I go into, regardless of the meeting, whether it's a one-on-one, -on -one, a staff meeting, CEO staff, whatever that meeting is, I always have three questions written down. Nine times out of 10, I do not use them, but that one time I had a 10 when it's a lull, and everyone's like, oh, I go, hey, does anyone have a clue why this pin in Japan is doing so well? I don't know, let's go figure it out. We need some analytics, call in the data folks, da -da -da, whatever it is, right? I always have those three questions. It takes a minute or two to figure it out, but it gives me that lull time. I do this in one on ones all the time. It gives me that set of questions I have ready to start the conversation, to talk about something. It allows me, especially for one on ones, it allows me to sort of prep and think, okay, Matt and I are working on growth, and Matt doesn't get the difference between the VP of engineering and the CTO, so we're going to talk about that, so I'm going to ask some questions about that this time. I'm going to talk through that sort of thing. Hack. Small little thing to make your meetings more productive. To make you look like you're coming in pre-processed and ready to go for that meeting. And how many of you play Peggle? A couple? Okay, so those seven people. How many of you know what is going to happen when I click play? Here we go, there's gonna be sound on this in the back. Pump it up if you want. Says, she said, she said, this is the most positive feedback you're ever going to get in your life. 
<laughs> and she's right. And it's like, it's a stupid little pachinko game. And when you get, you see what it did at the beginning there? As that ball was like going in to like hit the last one so that it triggered the week. It stopped. It zoomed in. And it said, okay. It actually built up the rainbow and unicorn situation, which was fascinating to me. We, as humans, and game makers know this incredibly well. <laughs> We as humans love compliments. I like your shirt. It's very slappy. It's a very slappy shirt. Now, I mean that, and I told you that, and you're smiling at me right now. Because you know I mean it, and you're like, that's my shirt, and I got recognized. These compliments that we do, legit, sincere compliments, are total free leadership points. They're completely free. And they're really, really, really super easy. I like your shirt as well. Shivani, I gotta tell you, I love talking to you because you're always smiling just like that. Like these things that we can do to give feedback to the rest of the folks and the humans that we're working with, as long as they're sincere and thoughtful, they're amazing. I'm totally addicted to this right now. Not like the Cat Dahlia music song, like months and months, but like, I'm thinking about this a lot because I see that when I use them, I get this reaction from folks that I call this rainbows and unicorns. And it's totally based on this pagel thing of like ode to joy and rainbows and unicorns, like head banging. It's like this, it's that thing, right? If you're putting your heart into these compliments that you're looking for and discovering and passing out, not going over the top because th then they become insincere. You're going to be really happy with what you're actually going to be getting. Free leadership points. I believe these are undervalued because we're in such a big hurry to get all the things done and there's all these things that is the side up and we've got all the stuff to do and I've got to run to a meeting. Take time. Take time. I like that color shirt. I like that orange. It's like Rams orange. Nice job. I felt good. See, it feels good, Sam, too. Okay, there is far too much to do. There is far too much to know. This job is impossible. This is my second favorite thing to do. How's a, a messy desk? Raise your hand. Messy desk, raise your hand. Okay, it's cool, it's cool. Tidy desk, raise your hand. Interesting. But everybody, did I miss something in the desk <laughs> spectrum there? All right, I'm, I, I, here's, let's be honest, you're actually probably traveling in one direction or the other, unless you're a super not messy desk person, in which case you get in the morning and you sit down and you clean your desk, which is not me. I start clean and I trend towards messy over time. Entropy wins, right? Okay. What I do every week or so, and there is a to-do, I come in and I kind of just look around my space and I tidy it up. Just tidy it up. Okay, just move this over here, the pen's going there, and this sort of thing. It's a little thing, it's not a big deal. I don't actually get down too far on the messy scale to be like, you know, smells like dead bananas bad, right? <clears throat> but I tidy it up. It's a little thing. It's a little investment in my sanity, it's a little bit investment of the perspective of the VP of engineering guys. Two minutes. My question to you is, as you leave here tomorrow, you go to work on Monday, you're going to walk around and you're going to see little things that seem broken, little things that are quite fixed. That time, and it, like, it's, they're not a big deal, they're so small that you're going to blow right by them, right? Because you've got this big meeting on Wednesday or this sort of thing. What I like to see out of leaders is that they're constantly figuring out where are the small bugs and how are they fixing. I guarantee you, I promise you, you are undervaluing, undervaluing the compounding awesomeness of continually fixing small things. I guess, my backpack, like, I just traveled recently. I'm like, you know, this backpack's kind of getting a little bit heavier, so dump it on the floor, sort it through, what do I actually need, put it back in. The entire trip, I was thinking, my backpack feels lighter, right? And I don't have any crap in there right now. These little hangnail things that are going on in your life right now, you're blowing by them. It's one a day. This morning, I walked up, I was brushing my teeth, thinking about this talk, going like, I need a new title. 
I looked over, I see the dead sound of a stack of books. They've been there for two weeks. They're getting deeper and deeper. Mike, I'm not going to read these books. <laughs> it's not going to happen. There's no way. So I took it, cut it down by half, did a little sorting algorithm. These are the most important three. Cut it, went into the other queue, which is the never pile, probably. <laughs> a lot of books. Um, and I looked at that side of the desk, two minutes of work, and everything was a little bit better. I'm here telling you about it. Um, the, I, there's a set of numbers in your business that are incredibly important. They're totally different. DAUs, A, whatever, ARR, um, regretted attrition, uh, number of hires. I don't know what it is. There's probably about five that you as leaders need to have in your head right now. Right now. You're updating it every single morning. Now, and if you don't know what they are, your first piece of homework is to figure out what they are. And the second part of it is you figure out what is the system by which I will see those. The good news is I work at Slack and there's these channels that just go like, this is important. I'm like, great, awesome. I will tell you what they are or they may come in Q&A. I care about the number of engineers in the team. What is our acceptance rate? What is our decline rate? Average revenue, uh, annual revenue, funding revenue, ARR, I'm using that wrong. Um, I also, um, what are the other ones, uh, DAUs. These are all I have them always in my head, right, sitting there. The thing is, you can, you need these. If people like, if they're going to come up in conversation, and having them just right there, as opposed to like, hold on a second, one more second. That's twenty-seven percent, right? Having those there are going. You are a hub for information for decisions. Having those ready is going to speed things up. And you knowing them is also going to alert you to things that are changing. At Pinterest, we saw our acceptance rates drop because I checked it every single day. I went, hmm, one day, yellow. Next week, still going down, yellow. What's going on here? Third week, red, right? So, and of course, got up, called the head of HR. I'm like, Adam, what's up? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, been dropping for three weeks. Hell, he's like, I did not know that. I'm like, you're the head of recruiting, Adam. And you're a wonderful person. I love your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about this. What are the numbers that you need to know? Don't, it doesn't, like, I'm not looking for like written in stone numbers, but what are the things that keep on coming up in conversation that you need to know, and what is the system by which you're gonna have them at the ready? Decline rates, whatever it is, I don't know what it is, and it changes over time based on the strategy of the company. Leaders, it's originally said leaders have, tend to have more information. That's not really the way that I would frame that. What we tend to be as leaders is we tend to have more context. Context is information plus judgment. I don't know. It's context. You always have more. And because you have more, you sleep better at night, maybe. You, especially during rapid growth. This is something that we're working on big time at Slack right now. You've got to just share for profusely. And it doesn't... Because you have the information and those gaps in your head don't exist about whatever is going on in the company, you take it for granted. And there's other folks who have exactly the same gaps, and I'm not sitting in that meeting, and they're like, what's going on here? That is a vacuum. And the rule is, humans will put the worst version of their fears in vacuums. That's where rumors start, that's where politics start, that's where, like, that crazy-ass, like, story about that thing that never happened because someone didn't have a piece of information, they cared about it more than they knew, and they said, huh, and they went to Matt, Matt, and they said, hey, Matt, I feel this is weird because I don't know this thing, and that mean Lop, doesn't that mean that Lop believes this? And they said a very fine thing, which is purely opinion, it was organic, and Matt heard, because Matt was in a hurry, he heard, what feels this? And then Matt went over to Marcy and said, did you know that Lop feels this? And Marcy said, that's bullshit. <laughs> no way Lop feels this. I totally disagree. And this was all started by that first person just looking at a gap and feeling it with their worst fear about a thing. This is where rumors start. This is all those things you're like, what is going on here? Share profusely. My hack here is meeting notes for uh, any meeting that you're in. 
Someone is in that meeting and they're taking notes. It's not you because you're running the meeting and you have to figure out what the chair you the snowflakes want. Someone's capturing it. As soon as that meeting's done, you have 15 minutes at the end. Someone, probably you, parses it, make sure everything is cool, and they send it out. At Pinterest, the CEO of Ben uh, we he was taking meetings, we always took meeting notes, and he accidentally set the CEO staff meeting notes to like the announced company email list, and he was trying to send it just to us. So it was like, like blast of all of this stuff, and everyone's like, hooray, this is awesome! And Ben's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> But there was such a resounding response to getting those notes out. It's like, oh uh, yeah, what do this mean? Every meeting should be captured, synthesized, because there's things in there which are confidential or private about a certain person who doesn't need to know. Get blasted out to an email list. Why would you use email lists? Who would use Slack, right? Okay, good. Um, go out to a channel and blast it out there. We just started this, I guess, like a month or so at Slack, and people love it because it's, like, it's that gap filling maneuver. It's like that you don't know what decision happened in there that actually affected Shivani in this way that you could never have predicted. You could have never predicted it. Blast the information, share it profusely. I don't know if this is true, but I like the line. I think this is how people, your team, feels about you. They are there, those, they are them, they are their own chaotic, beautiful snowflake, but I think their expectations are that you are the best version of them. This is totally unfair <laughs> for two reasons. Number one, they are they, and you are you, and you're totally different human beings. But their expectations, the standard that they're holding to you, is what they would be if they were their perfect version of themselves. Does that make sense? That's where a lot of the a lot of the consternation when you forget to do something comes from. You dropped it for a totally valid reason because it's a P4. It wasn't a big deal. But Susan, Susan is really her perfect version of Susan is I never miss anything. You cannot do that. Their expectation is you're the best version of them. This means every word that you're saying is being judged. Every single word. It's like you want to be friends and kind of winging it, and you want to be like just having casual conversations. Every single word that's being said is being judged. The most trouble that I've been in as a leader is when I've gotten up, Hopefully not happening right now, because this is all structured, by the way. Sort of. Um, <laughs> gotten up and just kind of, ah, kind of, blah, kind of, saying, ah, this kind of feels weird, blah, blah, but let me figure it out. And it's like, I like, said something off the cuff that was purely my opinion, and someone in the audience or in the meeting said, this is a violation, this is a values violation, a lot of people said to me. And if I thought about it for like maybe a second or two, I would have been like, Karen really cares about this piece a lot. And don't just blow past it. Think before you speak. It's funny, because it says, speak clearly and slowly on here. And I'm slowing down and moving slowly right now. That's what you need to be thinking about. All of this time that I'm doing, going slowly, is pre-processing time. Is that going to be funny? Is this relevant? Is the story flowing? Is the arc holding together? That's the work that I'm doing here. It takes practice, and if you want to go to the best speech training class, you should mail me, you should join the Slack channel, because I guarantee you, I probably said that three times, I don't guarantee this is dangerous, but this is true. <clears throat> That's a great shirt. Um, it really is. Um, the, there's a speech, uh, what's her, speech skills, is it Kara is her name? Is this class called speech skills? Um, it is absolutely a transformative speech training class. She does eight folks, and you will never see a better run meeting than this, I think, six or seven hours that you do with her. She's going to work on things that you didn't even know were issues that you had. I'll give you one example for me. I am a low talker. You probably don't. Can you hear me in the back? Okay, Rob, am I good? It's easy. See, she's like doing that, right? Right? Someone's back. Yeah, I can't really quite hear you. I am a low talker. First, let me tell you, right now, I feel like I'm yelling. 
um, when I go into the speech skills class, and I'm raising my voice, she, she has you do, like, hey, talk for three minutes about anything that you love. And I started talking to Snow Mike, and she's like, talk louder. She's like, oh, I'm okay. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm talking now. And she's like, you need to talk louder. Like, I feel like I'm yelling right now. She's like, perfect. I'm like, no way, what are you talking about? I am totally misaligned with how my voice carries, because I'm a low talker. That's what you'll learn in this class. And you as leaders, you're going to be doing this. You're going to be up here presenting. And as they said to me when I walked on stage, they talk to the back of the room. And I don't. And I didn't know that until I went to this class. I'm still bad at it. But I'm working on it. I've been thinking a lot about what is the difference between a leader and a senior leader. Because I have all of these lovely millennials that are expecting to be a director in like three and a half weeks, and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> slow down. And that's great. Enthusiasm, like awesome. But like, I don't know about how many how many directors are in the room right now. Alright, so directors, uh, only a couple of you. How long until you got the gig? Anyone? You gotta yell it. Don't say two weeks. Was it a year? Was it three? Hmm? One year? Five years. Five years? Anyone else? One year? It's pretty fast. Well, maybe we have title inflation going on in this valley. Anyway. Um, <laughs> um, but here's uh, the reason, the point is, I have to be able to explain to these folks what is the difference between the different types of leaders. There are, there's a really, you need, if you want a rubric for like the leadership ladder, solve problem, don't worry about that, I'll send you mine, join the channel. The, the leadership one is really tricky because it's a little bit more about capability, like do you have managers, are you managing managers, this sort of thing. I think that this hack is one of the biggest differences between a leader and a senior leader. What I see out of the more mature leaders, if you will, is they're far better at like saying, yeah, totally fucked that up. <laughs> like, that was a disaster. That was a disaster, right? And that's hard because they want you, you to be perfect versions of themselves. They, that's hard. But it's not just, hey, I screwed up. It's also, I screwed up, and this is, my, this is the judgment that I used to actually get in that situation. So that's how I made the decision, and this is what I learned when I screwed it up badly. And this is how we're going to fix it going forward. Which, by the way, is every post-mortem process that you've ever been through. But you're doing it for yourself. Senior leaders, any leaders, need to know when they screwed up. Those first brand new leaders think this is going to get them fired. They think that they've got to be perfect. And we're not. The word is chaotic. Beautiful snowflakes. We're all over the place. We're going to fail a lot. And failure... This is the thing about the Silicon Valley. Failure is learning. Fail fast, right? This is an amazing thing. And your team is going to trust. They're going to respect you more when you get up and say, this is a disaster. That was me. I did that. Admit and explain failures. I'm writing this piece right now called Gossip, Rumors, and Lies. And it came out of a great conversation on the Vans Leadership Slack. Someone was like, what's a staff meeting? And I'm like, and one of the things that I do in a staff meeting, and I suggest to others to do in a staff meeting, is to create a section in every staff meeting, which is called Gossip, Rumors, and Lies. And by the way, you put it on the agenda, and everyone's like, what's going on here? And no one's going to say anything, and you're going to have to actually see it and kind of like see it. But it becomes this wonderful force for good, where anything that people heard in the prior week can show up and you can go like, hey, Marcy said, Lot felt this thing about this thing, and that sounds like bullshit. What do we think? And Lot, who is in the meeting, goes, well, that's crazy cow. That's ridiculousness. And here's why. And I said this thing. This is how it happened. And suddenly, something which was a political disaster two weeks down the road because of misinterpretation or poor communication gets nipped in the bud. Because what happens? You put it in the speaker notes, and it goes out to everybody. It's a bug fix. Gossip, rumors, and lies. In rapid growth companies, I've Pinterest, Palantir before that, and also Slack, my biggest worry 
Are the gaps sort of getting created between the teams? I was just DMing Stuart, our CEO, this morning about this. We were just talking about how the organism learns to communicate with itself. And when it's small, everyone knows everything, and everyone has all of the context. And then it gets big, and these gaps get created, and communication becomes this taxing thing. You've got to figure out, deliberately figure out, what are the ways that the rumors, it's in a, a Palantir, which is a creepy company, I get that, we call it Rument, Rumor Intelligence. There's actually part of the government called, that actually works in this space, and they have like definition of rumors and what the different categories are. Crushing Rument is the thing that we did there because we wanted people to be, understand what was going on, have context, have faith that we were doing the right things. <laughs> I love this one. Thanks for laughing. <laughs> Their expectation is that you are the perfect version of them. And the shit is going to hit the fan. It's going to get bad sometimes. And when it's bad, everyone knows it because they're in the Slack channel and they know that thing is going and it's really, really bad. Holy shit. And like they're shaking down to their bones. And then I walk by and I'm like, hey, Shivani, how's it going? And she's like, why is he not freaking out? <laughs> Freaking out does no one any good. And I am walking around, and I'm very aware that there's this very big situation going on, but I'm smiling. I'm sending, it's actually kind of like the compliment. I'm sending positive reinforcement into the team that, yes, there's a problem. I am choosing joy, <laughs> even though I'm terrified, as my means of understanding this. I'm choosing happiness to go, yeah, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to joke about it, I'm going to snark about it, and I'm occasionally going to lose it, but I'm walking around as the sky falls with a smile on my face. When someone asks me, they're like, hey, wow, you know the sky is falling. I'm like, the sky falls like every two weeks. It's like, it's how I know that I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that I want you to do Thing, and then we can talk a little about Q and A's. I want you to just figure out that one thing that you value. What is that one thing that you really value that you want to work on? It's 16 different hacks. The only thing, whether it's one on ones, whether it's whatever it is, I want you to pick that one thing. And I'm going to tell you what my one thing is right now. And those of you who saw me last year have heard this before, but this is continuing to be the one thing that I, I'm hacking on, the thing that I care about. I play, this, I play this game called Destiny. Any Destiny players in the room? Rob, raise your hand, work. Destiny, sorry, keep your hands up. Great game. OK, um, I have to explain it to the folks who are not video game. Video game players? Interesting. OK, wow, OK. I'm going to lose sleep over that. Um, <laughs> um, Destiny is a first person shooter. You're running around shooting the aliens. And the numbers are going up, and you're collecting the things, and you're min-maxing, and you're doing all this cool, all really cool stuff. Um, it's a lovely, awesome game. You can play Destiny by yourself, but it's more fun to play with other humans. Um, for certain parts of the game, called raids, you are required more humans. Moreover, you need six humans who need to act as a team to actually go and defeat the bad guys. There are some challenges to this game. Um, number one is the internet is full of colorful people <laughs> and personalities. They're lovely. <laughs> Raids, these six people things, are complex affairs. Someone needs to lead or else everyone dies. It's called a wipe. So someone actually has to say, listen, this is what we're going to do, and this is the order of operation that's going to happen. Does this sound familiar? It's called leadership. But in this case, it's volunteer leadership. If you don't have to listen to me because I'm the boss. It's like this is the person who needs to be a volunteer leader. Um, in our guild, clan, whatever the hell we call it, there's this guy. His name is DJ. He works at New Relic up in Portland. I have never met DJ, but DJ has actually changed me as a leader. I am not joking when I tell you that DJ is the nicest, calmest human being that I know. And I know a lot of people. We've spent hours, thousands of hours, doing digital battles with the bad guys. And he is unfailingly kind. You need to leave the raid. Raid takes like two hours, right? You need to leave the raid because 
been out, you've been out for two hours and you got to be with your family. Like we've been out of two hours and you were bouncing. DJ, no worries. No worries, no problem. We'll figure it out. Having repeated difficulty fulfilling your particular role in this raid, resulting in the team failing, DJ's right there. He's like, no problem. Never, never played before? Forgot to tell us that in this particular raid? <laughs> forgot to tell us that before we started? And we're all like, what the? I'm mad! And DJ's like, no problem. I love teaching this part of the raid. Want to practice a part of the raid? because you've never done it before that's resulting in additional wipes. TJ's like, this is how I learned. I have been here before. It's a leadership model that lends itself to volunteer situations because folks are there because they want to be there as opposed to they're getting a paycheck. But my question to you, and the thing that I'm working on, I'm getting a lot of value out of this, is why is it not a leadership model for all, for all situations? You're thinking of an important leader. You're thinking of like a Jobs or a Larry Ellison or a titan of industry. And you've heard that story about when someone walked in, Steve Jobs in the elevator, and Jobs was like, hey, Matt, what do you do? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's not important and you're fired. Sorry, Matt, you're not fired. <laughs> He's like, <"Whew." laughs> First off, rumor never, ever happened. Someone made up that story in one of those gaps, and they filled it because it's a great story, and I'm up here now telling it like 20 years later. It never happened. But let's say it did happen. Let's say it was something that actually really happened. It's a good story. It's an interesting story, but it's not good leadership. The hack, the thing I'm working on right now, I love it, is I'm being unfailingly kind. Anything comes to me. Disaster, political situation, oh my god, I'm going out of pit, this sort of thing. How can I be kind in this situation? Didn't say nice, didn't say nice, I said kind. Not sure what your hack is. There's a lot of them up here, this is 16 of them, there's a lot more. But I am happy to report that I'm just joking. Leadership is totally possible. It's totally possible. It's hard. There's lots of different things you need to learn. I am 46 years old, I've been doing this for 20 years, and every year, I've been at the top of my game. <laughs> I'm doing great! Every year it's getting better, I'm learning more. So, figure out your hack is, keep on hacking, leadership is possible, and thank you very much.